Hey everyone, James here. I figured why not create another video about how to set up your stream specifically for developers because I've been getting a lot of questions about that. So tune in and of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitch and on Twitter at James Montemagno where I stream every single Friday at 2 p.m. So let's get into it. All right, so I've been getting a lot of questions about, hey, how do you set up your stream? What graphics do you need specifically? What are the sort of layers inside of OBS and what does it look like? And I figured what better way than, hey, show you my OBS setup. So here we go, I'm inside of OBS here and I'm on my full webcam scene. Um, this is usually where I go, um, specifically when I start my stream. Now I will say though, what's cool is that I'm logged into Twitch. You can just log in with your credentials. You can see all your activity feed, stream information inside of here, chat stats. It's just nice to have that on a bonus monitor. Now, of course, I go ahead and um, I actually use uh, two computer setups. So I am connected via an Elgato uh, HD60S over here to my Mac, which is super duper nice, uh, and sometimes to my main computer via an internal capture card. Um, so let me just go ahead and go through the scenes. Now, if you've never been in OBS before, you have scenes and you have sources, and sources are the elements inside of your scene. There are a billion videos on how to set this up, so I'm not gonna walk step by step, but I kinda wanna go through what my stream looks like. So if I go into starting soon here, we have a few elements. Uh, mostly you'll see a lot of browser elements because those are part of Streamlab, which give you the alert pop-ups, browser emotes, things like that. Now, I like to have custom graphics on here. So if I hide some of these uh, graphics, you'll see that I have a graphic, basically, that says starting soon. Gives you my contact information, and that's really about it. On top of that, I have a little um, text to start my stream timer, which is an application that I created uh, that allows you to count down the time. So this is nice. I integrate it into my stream deck and it simply counts down the time and reads from a file. So here when I double tap, I give it the file to read and done. It updates and counts down automatically, which is really nice. Now on top of that, I have some alerts and then I also have some browser emotes, which of course you would need to chat inside of here, but we can simulate that here, give it a little heart, and then we get that little boom, little emote on there, which is floating up to the sky. Now let's get into my full webcam. This is very, very simple. This is the next transition point that I go. Uh, so when I introduce my stream, I go from starting soon to an introduction to, integrate, uh, to, to greet everybody that's going on into my stream. And you can see I have my chat window over here. So if I come in and I do more emotes, a little mooch and a duke, we can see that I get boom, more emotes flying around the screen, but also my chat window going on here. I like to put my chat on the screen. Some people don't, it's up to you. Mostly I archive my videos later on YouTube, so I find that nifty. Now again, let's go ahead and break this down. So I'm going to remove my browser sources. I have chat window, the alerts, and then here's my C920 camera. Boom, is gone. See, it's just an overlay that is a gap, basically, over the Duke. I have a Duke image. That Duke image over here has a filter on it which just simply is a color correction for opacity. So I can simply adjust that Duke inside of there, which is nice. I just like to have that as a nice little overlay. And then the core of almost every single one of my um, scenes is this generic background image. It has a nice little bloom in the middle of it. So that way it's not just a solid color and that's it. And uh, you can tell that when I go to the, you know, starting soon over here on um, the stinger is gonna play. Um, we can see that it has a very similar bloom here. I'm not gonna talk about stingers here, so let's go ahead and turn them off for a second. Um, but stingers are the transitions that you're seeing between those scenes. So let's turn these back on, boom, 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 boom. And remember that the ordering is super important here as well. So the ordering inside of uh, OBS, uh, these are stacking on top of each other. So I always have my alerts to be almost the top layer. Um, here I have the emotes sorting over everything. Now, after that, I go into my computer. So that's usually where I go next, and that's my computer scene. There's a lot more elements going on here, but do not fear, it is not that scary. Um, if I start to peel back some of these layers on top of here, um, what I have is a screen capture. I have um, some alerts that are going on here. Um, I have my count of how many people are watching me. I have my webcam, obviously, and I have my chat room here. Now. Let's lower those back. There goes the counter, gone. 
Um, the emotes, that was the overlay if I emote it up, is now gone. So if I put it back on, put it back on, it only it deactivates, so it'll be gone there. The alerts, now those are gone. Browser chat window, that is gone. There goes my webcam group. We'll talk about that more in detail later. And then over here, I have um, my events, which we'll go ahead and roll that back. We have my video capture. There we go. And then I have some text on top over here. And rolling it back, we go all the way to the background image. So why do I have so many layers? Well, the very core bottom of it is this image background, which is the same image background we saw earlier. I like to put a little, you know, customization there in the background. Um, it gives it some cool texture into it, but more importantly, I do this because I often have to enter some passwords or get some keys and things like that. So I like to hide this video capture. And specifically what I do, if I turn on back on my webcam, is I have a good old stream deck. There's my stream deck and I have one button on it that I can press that automatically hides and shows that scene um, or that source, I mean, on this scene specifically. So that's really, really nice. So I can hide that at any moment. Now on top of that, I have, of course, my video capture. This is using that Elgato HD 60. So if I pop that up uh, over here, there it is. And you'll notice though, that I'm actually cropping it. So this is my full Mac and I have the bar in the bottom. Now, the reason I cropped the top layer and the bottom layer is because it's not very important. And also because here, um, on this specific source, I want to have some additional information such as the events, the chat window and other alerts going on there. So you just want to have that on there. Very cool. Now, beyond that, I have a be right back window. It's just literally an image that says be right back <laughs> with some text overlay. I of course have the browser emotes, the alerts, always have the alerts on every single page. And beyond that, I have a thanks. And the thanks again is very minimal. There's alerts and browser credits, which is a Streamlabs uh, input. And then this image that says, thanks for watching. Just one big 1080p image, that's it. Now, above and beyond that, you can go a little bit crazy in custom if you wish. Uh, on channel nine, we're doing a lot of remote recordings and we have this really cool um, graphic overlay that the graphics team made. I actually really love it. Uh, maybe I'll steal it, we'll see. This is getting a little bit more professional, I think, than just my slamming some stuff together on there. But it's really, really minimal. Um, it goes the other way around. So it actually stacks the image cut out on top of all of your sources. So if I peel this back, we can see that I simply toggle on and off this graphic. If I pop that up, that's what it looks like there, which is cool, it has this drop shadow on it. I have my, of course, my C920, and then I have the full 1080p. It gives you the full screen, which I think is really, really cool on top of it. Now, of course, here I don't have any of my chat or anything like that on it, but I could easily add those in here to some effect, especially down here if I'm on my Mac. I have my bar, so kind of up to you what you wanna show, what you wanna do, but I love this um, output in general, very, very nice. The other question I often get is, how are you achieving that magical Zamagon cutout and also not Zamagon cutout? <laughs> because if you go to my actual computer over here, it's the same exact camera, the C920, but I have this Zamagon cutout. Well, a few things going on here. The first is that this webcam group that we see is actually made of a scene and an overlay. So if I toggle that on, we can see that the scene here is that Zamagon, which is very cool. Let me go ahead and pop that back out, boom. Now, what I wanna show and I wanna make sure is that how I set this up, I have a scene that has my webcam in it. Now, you can add a mask onto any, uh, any source and that will cut it out. So I have a Zamagon source. This was given to me by Kim Philpotts, which is awesome. And if I look at my filters, the camera if you add it onto the camera, then it is going to apply that every time you add the camera anywhere, because it's a single source. You can't have multiple sources of uh, the camera, so you have to have that on there. So what I do is on my scene, I add a filter to the scene. So anything in the scene, which just happens to be my webcam, gets that cut off and it's in the middle and it looks very, very nice. So I have the Samagon cut out here and then I select the color, which is the alpha mask and I'm done. And that's really, really it, to be honest with you. Pretty cool. So that's what you need inside of OBS to get started, but what else do you possibly need? That's a good question. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head over into my Twitch page. And uh, the one thing we'll see is that my chat windows are coming up here. I can see all my people I'm following, which is cool. Um, but I also wanna show you what you may need inside of Twitch. You can customize your colors. You can also add a profile banner. Some people have it, some people don't. I like to have it because it shows up um, in different areas. And I think my monkey's really cool that my friend Ben Rees made, which is awesome. And then down here, panels. Panels are super important. Um, it gives uh, viewers or when you raid someone and someone else checks out your channel, it gives you information about you, who you are, links to relevant sources like GitHub, Twitter, YouTube, your chat commands, some donation stuff. You can add gear links, chat rules, anything you want. You can edit panels. You can have custom overlay things like recommendations, countdown timers, whole bunch of things. I mostly have these graphics. So you can upload a graphic here, which you see, and then link it to something and add a description if you choose. Some people just put images and that's it. And some people do just text, but I like to have these images, a little overlay, gives a little bit more professional to it. Now, that being said, Twitch will soon be rolling out these sort of channel trailer offline mode thingies. I don't know what they're going to look like. So I've just been kind of, you know, toggling with them, I should say. But here it's nice. It says I recently streamed these categories, some um, top members of live coders, which is cool. And then there's a beautiful about page. So you don't have to duplicate your YouTube blog, GitHub, Twitter links. You still have panels though. So the about here is not going to give you everything, but you will have a schedule and some of the about. So it should cut down some of that clutter and hopefully is a little bit more mobile optimized, which I think would be great. So one thing you may want to do once you become an affiliate is set up subscriber badges. Now this is when anybody um, subscribes to your channel, it gives them a reason to subscribe besides ad free viewing, which is super important, but here you can create multiple sub badges and also custom emotes. So I always recommend, even when you first start to stream, it's pretty, it's not like drop dead simple to become affiliate, but if you just go at it enough you can become an affiliate. Um, and I think it's really important to at least start thinking about your subscriber badges. You can do one, three, six, nine, and one year and beyond one year. Now too, I have three, um, one, three, six, and one year, which were the original. I'm going to have those custom made. And then you have custom emotes. Every channel starts off with one. So, and you can have more, the more people subscribe. So at least create one custom emote. That's the very first thing you do. Maybe it's your face, maybe it's some words, something like that. You know, look at what your subscribers um, are, are like, what you're like, some, some information there. And you can see this background banner here too, which is kind of cool. So at a high level to get started, just do some of the very simple things inside of OBS. Now, of course, you don't need to do all of the crazy things that I've done before inside of OBS. If you look at some popular uh, developer streams, it's just their face in a webcam in the bottom right and uh, their desktop, and that's it. <laughs> that's what Frank does. Um, he has some custom setup on his machine. It looks great. I mean, to be honest, you don't need all that much. Once you get more into it, I, I think it's definitely worth investing a little bit and taking some time to add some character to it. You can go on Fiverr, you can create it yourself. Uh, it's really up to you and what you want your stream to look like. But know kind of that you don't need tons. You can just get started with simple text and a color background if you want, uh, and then put your webcam on there. It could just be the whole thing, 1080p, doesn't matter. Um, and, and that's really about it. So anyways, I hope that you found this uh, informational, um, helpful to get started with a stream um, and get upstreaming what you actually need to get started and just a little bit once you get beyond and you hit that affiliate status. Anyways, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, my Twitch. It's just all James Montemagno and I stream every single Friday at 2 p.m. I'll do some more videos on my Streamlabs integrations, my Nightbot integration, a few other things that I think are nifty. And of course, if you want to hear more, check out me and Frank every single Monday on our podcast, Merge Conflict at mergeconflict.fm. And I'll link specifically to one of the podcasts where I tell him about some of the things that he needed when he got started streaming. It's pretty cool. I really liked it. And he's doing an awesome job. Yeah. So anyways, hope you found this helpful. Leave comments if you want to see more informational videos like this and have a good one and stay safe.